Hi there, everybody. Welcome to EDUC 5800, the Applied Research Project. My name's Rob Power, and I'm an assistant professor here with the School of Education and Health at Cape Breton University. Um, this is going to be an interesting term. I should start uh, right away by telling you this is not going to be like any other course that you have ever taken. It's not actually a course, even though you're registered into it as if it was. This is going to be a long-term project that you're going to be undertaking. It's going to span uh, two terms. So uh, for purposes of this video, uh, it's going to span the fall and winter term. But you may be taking this course over the winter and spring terms as well. Uh, what you're going to be doing this term, you're going to actually be doing some classroom-based research or uh, some uh, literature review-based research. That depends on the option, the pathway that you take. And that depends on some of the conversations that we are going to have uh, in the very early stages of this course. So what can you expect from this course? Well, like I said, it's not like any other course that you have ever taken. While there is an official start date for the term, and that's indicated on the course syllabus, and it's probably been communicated to you by the university as well, there are some things that if you have access to this video and uh, this course site before the, uh, the course actually starts, there's some things that you should probably look at right away. And I've got those tucked away under the Getting Started module area here in Moodle. Uh, one thing that you should uh, definitely take a look at is looking at this overview video and my personal welcome video. Get to know me a little bit and get to understand the course a little bit. Take the time to review the syllabus in detail so that you get an understanding of what this course is going to look like, what the scheduling is going to look like, uh, what types of assignments you're going to be working on. Get to know the layout of the course in Moodle. Uh, look through everything in detail, but with a special lens on getting started and uh, the step one, the first week or so of the course. And then uh, after that, start thinking about what it is that you would like to do for your research project for this term. Um, <clears throat> your answers to that are going to depend on uh, your answers to certain questions that you're going to ask yourself and certain questions that I'm going to ask you in a getting started survey. So, you know, are you teaching in a classroom this term or in uh, the second term, more importantly, uh, because that's when you'd be implementing your project. If you're not going to be teaching in a classroom, you may want to look at uh, option B, which we have uh, described under uh, step one. Option B lets you um, opt out of actually conducting some classroom-based research uh, and instead take a literature review, sort of a quantitative analysis or a qualitative analysis of literature on a particular topic and produce, uh, produce a research uh, topic, a research paper out of that. So you want to ask yourself that. You also want to ask yourself, you know, are you teaching in Nova Scotia this term or are you in another jurisdiction? That's going to uh, definitely impact some of the decisions that you're going to make and some of the actions that you need to take. Regardless of which option you take, you're going to need to go through ethics review in this program. If you're teaching in Nova Scotia, that's going to be a little bit more streamlined because I can uh, submit a blanket ethics uh, application and ethics approval for everyone who's a classroom teacher in the K-12 system here in uh, the province of Nova Scotia. But if you're in another jurisdiction, that blanket application doesn't apply. So you're going to have to go through the full REB process here at Cape Breton University. You're also going to need to follow the processes and procedures to get REB review from your own jurisdiction, uh, whether that be in Newfoundland and Labrador or in New Brunswick or PEI or some other jurisdiction uh, in Canada. Your own school board is going to have its own processes. Your provincial department of education is probably also going to have its own processes. And you need to determine what those processes are, and gather together all the documents and resources that you're going to need, and get those ethics applications prepared. More about that in just a minute. So what do you need to do to get up and running? Well, for that getting started uh, module, if you have access to the course before the course starts, take a look at it right away. Uh, take a look at the syllabus, take a look at the course, start thinking about what it is that you have in mind for your ideas, for your research project, 
and complete the getting started survey that I have posted. That survey is going to allow me to gather some contact information so I can set up some one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. It's also going to give me a sense of where you are, what context you're going to be uh, completing this project in, whether or not um, you can actually do classroom-based research or if you need to look at uh, option B, uh, for example. After that, you're going to get into uh, step one, which starts uh, right away on the first day of the course. There's some course readings uh, and resources for you to go through, uh, some information about the pathways that you can take through this research project and what option B would look like. Um, I also want to set up a one-on-one -on -one chat with you. That can be by phone or by video conference. I will have a... Uh, a Teams meeting room set up, so we'll be able to uh, to meet by Teams. As a CBU student, you'll have access to, to uh, the Teams platform. That would be preferable because it'll give us a chance to share screens if necessary and, and share some resources and take a look at them. But if phone works better for you, then you can provide me with your contact information and we can set up a chance to uh, to chat by phone. Don't delay in getting that survey done in the Getting Started module and uh, in uh, setting up a time to uh, to meet and chat with me. I'll be prompting you on that. I'll post a link to a uh, doodle poll or a survey or something like that where we can uh, select some times to meet and chat for 20 minutes or a half hour or so and just wrap our heads around where you are with, uh, with the program and um, uh, what your ideas are initially for getting started. I've also added something new in for the course, the uh, conceptual framework activity. Don't let that overwhelm you. It doesn't need to be perfect at this point, but I've given you some examples of some conceptual frameworks that I have developed as part of research projects that I've been a part of. What I want you to do is put together a rough diagram of what uh, the sources of your ideas are, the big question, the big picture idea that you're going to be looking at and what some of your initial thoughts or questions might be that you want to answer with your research project. The reason why I'm asking you to do this, even though uh, the first couple of weeks of the course are really jam-packed with uh, stuff for you to do, is because if you can conceptualize what it is that you're going to be doing for your research project in a visual form, in a nice succinct diagram, and you can communicate that, uh, that conceptual framework to others, that you have a good idea of the direction you're going to take and it's going to help keep you focused and you really do need to narrow down that focus and uh, the direction that you're going to take as early as possible in this course or you're not going to meet some critical deadlines later on that will enable you to proceed with the research project. Now just looking at my schedule here on my other monitor uh, you get uh, past weeks one and two which is planning your research you get into week three which is designing your data collection at this stage, you need to figure out what kind of uh, research instruments you're going to use to collect your data. Uh, are you going to create some kind of an inter uh, technology based intervention and then uh, perhaps uh, some surveys that you're going to distribute to your students? Are you going to do some interviews? How are you going to collect that data and how are you going to analyze that data? You need to nail that down as early as possible because you'll need answers to those questions when you get into step three, which is preparing your ethics application. Now, like I said, if you're a teacher in Nova Scotia, that process is, is a bit streamlined because I can get a blanket research ethics approval for you, but we're all still gonna go through the process of preparing uh, all of the research ethics application documents as if we were gonna submit them independently. I'm doing this because Depending on the jurisdiction that you are in or that you may end up in later on, once you graduate from this program, if you're ever going to conduct any other research, you need to understand this research ethics process and you need to be able to prepare one of these applications. So this is going to be a graded assignment. Uh, it's going to be a pass-fail assignment, actually. Uh, you're going to prepare those documents as if you were going to submit them. If you need to go through individual ethics review because you're doing classroom-based research and you're not in Nova Scotia, then you're going to need to meet the deadlines to submit those documents uh, here at CBU. There's an early deadline in October and in November if we are currently in the fall term. You need to meet those deadlines or you're not going to have your answer from them by November or December. And then you're not going to be able to implement your research project uh, come January, come, come the second term of the course. So very important to keep on time with preparing those applications. Once you've got those applications uh, done, we're going to move on to step 
four, which is building your technology intervention. So if you are doing classroom-based research, you're going to need to build uh, some kind of intervention, something that you want to do that's technology-based in your classroom with your students. So you get to spend the rest of the term doing that, uh, getting that ready to implement uh, for, uh, for the winter term. Uh, and you're also going to be doing some self-check-ins along the way. Uh, we're going to move on to stage five or step five uh, early in the winter term. Uh, for that, you're going to need to start off right on the first day of the term. You're going to need to submit chapters one to three of your research paper to me. These are going to include your introduction and your uh, research questions and problem statement, your literature review section of your final paper, and uh, chapter three is your methodologies. You're going to have uh, most of this already done by the time you get your ethics application prepared. You're going to have a, a good chunk of this prepared. You just need to put it into a formal uh, formal document. Submit chapters one to three uh, to me in early January. So you can be working on that uh, uh, from late October up until the end of December and get that submitted by the beginning of January. Uh, and then after that, we're going to move on to stage four, which is actually implementing the or stage five which is actually implementing the project in your school over a period of three to four weeks um, after you've implemented your project and collected your data step six is going to be the purposeful data analysis section this is where you're going to take all of that data that you've collected you're going to analyze it you're going to figure out what it is that you've learned from doing this research and get all of your data organized for preparation of your final paper uh, the next stage is going to be designing your final paper and your presentation for sharing. So communicating the results of your research. We've got a few weeks allocated for this. Uh, you're going to have a, um, a nice final paper produced, which you'll submit to me by the end of the, uh, the winter term. You're also going to prepare a, a video presentation to share your results with the rest of the class and to share with anyone else that you uh, want to. And then after that, once you've communicated your results, you're going to be through with the course. You're going to have uh, your research project completed and you can celebrate. Now, it sounds like a lot of information uh, to take in. Sounds like a lot of steps that you have to go through. Don't worry. I'm here to guide you through the process. Uh, I have done this process before as part of my doctoral dissertation research and part of research projects that I've uh, been a part of. Um, over the last uh, number of years. So I've gone through all of these stages. I know the heartaches and, and the stresses that you're going to go through, and I'm here to help you work through the process. If at any stage you need to get in touch with me, don't hesitate to reach out. We do have a questions and help forum uh, in Moodle in the course. That's pretty much, you know, for, for general questions about the course itself, uh, about deadlines, about... Uh, where to find resources, broken links, things like that. Anything that might be of general interest to anybody in the course, I've got that questions and help form there where you can check and see if the question's already been answered or you can share that question for everyone's benefit. But don't hesitate to reach out to me by email or by phone if, uh, if you absolutely need to uh, and uh, set up a chance to chat one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have that very early in the term, but you can, set, you can meet with me anytime that you need to and uh, we'll help you get through this process. I'm looking forward to working with all of you this term, looking forward to seeing what ideas you have for your research projects, and looking forward to helping you reach the end goal of actually implementing that research project and communicating those results and, and uh, seeing what you discover through your research. Once again, welcome to the course. Reach out to me anytime you need to.